Hi everyone! Today I will show you my art from one semester of composition and figure drawing classes that I took at Brigham Young University. I am studying illustration there, for those of you who don't know. The composition class was more about design than drawing, so most of my work from the class is a little strange. This was the first assignment we did, and its goal was to help us learn to work with limitations. We had a limited amount of shapes, and there was a certain way we could place them. Honestly, it turned out to be a very cool assignment, and I really enjoyed it. After this, we started to learn about color. Of course, we learned about basic color schemes. And then we had an assignment where we could use those. This one has dark colors, just dark. This one is dissonant colors, which is basically colors that don't look well together. This is complementary color scheme. This one is analogous. This is a triad scheme. These colors are monochromatic. Monochromatic color scheme is variations of colors created by different levels of situation and brightness of the same hue, by the way. This one is light colors. And the last one is muted colors. Honestly, out of all of these, I only like complementary, analogous and tried one. All others, I would say mediocre. Especially this one. I don't like this one. Ugh. But it was a really interesting assignment also. We worked with acrylic paint and tape. So we would put some tape on, put a layer of paint, and then take the tape off. And the same thing again for the next layer. Working with limitations is a very cool boost for creativity. That's one of the things that I got out of this assignment. For the next assignment, we have to draw contour without looking at the paper. Afterwards, the teacher let us finish the work with paint, so I decided to paint water because it would explain why my hands are like this. We were told to pay attention to balance, not to make symmetric composition, and to pick a specific color palette. I chose complementary colors because they're my favorite. The two arts for the next assignment are so huge that I'm not even sure that they will fit in the frame. Yep, they're too big. Um, the goal for these two was to work with textures. I hope you can see it. This one I made with a crumpled paper tissue that I put in some paint. We were asked to paint texture first and then paint a composition over it. I honestly like the second one a lot more because the texture makes a lot more sense and I just like drawing girls. <laughs> Again, I don't know if you can see the texture here, but I tried to make it look like fur. What I did is I made a couple paint strokes, and after they dried for a couple seconds, I spread them to as much paper as I could. After that, I watered acrylic paint down, put the brush in there, and then did something like this. I don't know what this technique is called, but it created these stains. The next assignment was photography. We had to take a picture with a veil between the model and a photographer. Basically like a layer between a model and photographer. The whole class went to this car graveyard. I don't know what's the name of the place where they store abandoned broken down cars. How cool is that? And the second picture had to have an unbroken line across the whole picture. I used my roommate, a choker, and something like a skirting on our wall to do that. Also a little photoshop. The next assignment was to make an art using something that is out of our control. So what I did is I put paper on the floor and threw little pieces of paper on it. And then I glued them where they landed. Honestly, I never was a huge fan of abstractionism, or whatever it's called. However, I have really warm maternal feelings towards this piece and I like it, which is surprising for me. The last assignment was to draw something like a Google Doodle. We had to choose a character or a person and disguise his or her name in the background. By the way, I didn't highlight the name in the social media version and I think no one found the name. But for the assignment, I highlighted it just in case. This is it for the composition class. I didn't talk a lot about exact principles that I learned in the class because I will make a separate video for that. The next class was figure drawing. I wish I could show you what we drew at the class itself but the drawings are too big and there are too many of them. Just too many. So I will just insert pictures of some of them. In the beginning my sketches were pretty bad, honestly, even though I spent five years at art school and knew the basics of figure drawing. I just 
didn't know how to actively apply all the knowledge I had by that time, and this class really helped me to learn how to do it. We had a lot of opportunities to practice, so now I don't even need to think about proportions and anatomy while I'm drawing. Also, we worked with pastels, and I fell in love with this medium. You can make very different lines with it. Really recommend it. Besides drawing in class, we always had to draw 10 figures as homework. Again, in the beginning it was pretty bad, so I'm going to go through it really fast. Also sorry for the smudges, I did some pastel drawings on the other side. We started by just sketching, then we started to use proportions. Also we were told to draw with a ball pen, and I hate drawing with pens because all of your mistakes are forever. But little by little I started to get used to it. I started to use some tricks to make drawings easier, and then we were finally allowed to use pencil and life became easier. It was so cool to see the progress. Then we were told to start drawing shadows, which also made sketches a little better. After we started to study volume and how to show it using shadows. And at this point I finally started to properly use all the knowledge that I was taught all these years. Especially using contrast to highlight important elements or those that are close to us. For example here. This hand is the closest element to us and it is also in the middle of the sketch. So I highlighted it with thick lines and shadows. Everything else, like this leg or hand, they're not as important, so they're not as detailed and bright. By the way, I realized that I like drawing sitting and laying figures more than standing figures. Maybe because they involve less calculations of proportions. After figures, we started studying face elements. Eyes, noses, lips, ears. Then we put everything together, and after the album was over, I used a sucker punch. I started drawing on the other sides of the paper, that's why there are so many smudges. <laughs> and after faces we started drawing hands. By the way, I want to say that practice is everything, it is the only thing that helped me to learn to draw hands. It's not enough to know something, it's not enough to know the proportions or anatomy, you need to know how to use this knowledge. This whole class was about helping me to learn how to use the knowledge that I got in art school. At the end of the class, we came back to figure drawing, and at this point I enjoyed it a lot more because now some things became automatic and I could focus on things that I liked more. Also by that time I knew some tricks to help me get anatomy right. For example, I started to use ovals for the parts of the body. Actually the human body is a bunch of shapes like ovals, circles and squares and triangles. For example, chest is an oval, pelvis is an oval, arms, legs, they're all ovals. So I really recommend using ovals for sketches. Or at least other shapes. Without these inner shapes, it's pretty hard for me to get anatomy. At some point I decided that I wanted to try quick, line-focused sketches. That was really cool. This technique helps to focus on your lines and dynamics. And if I'm not mistaken, these are some of my last ones, and I think best ones, which makes sense because they're my last and yeah they're last and that's it thank you for watching keep drawing and don't slouch